are approaching one of the holy days of the year, Yawm Ashura. It is a day of heavenly victory, divine support. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported his servants on such a day. It is related that on this day, many of Allah's true servants were supported. According to Manasha Adnan's book, which I'm sure he, Mulan uh, Sheikh Nazim, sanctioned, that on the day of Ashura, just some of the, some of the great events, تَقْلِيبُ أَهْلِ الْكَهْفِ مِنْ جَنْبٍ إِلَى جَنْبٍ that the people of the cave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we we turn their bodies from left, from right to, to left, from from left to right, so that uh, there's no uh, the uh, for their for their health. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to uh, Shahanan's book that تَقْلِيبُ أَهْلِ الْكَنْفِ مِنْ جَمْبٍ إِنْ جَمْبٍ happened every Ashura every Ashura they were turned from left to right or from right to left for 300 some years and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala اصطفَى آدم سيدنا آدم was chosen from amongst creation to be the father of humankind and the first prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, in terms of uh, being sent because uh, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is Nabi before even creation but Sayyidina as Adam as a physical uh, the first physical prophet to be sent to this earth Warafa Idris, Sayyidina Idris was raised to the second heaven Sayyidina Nuh was still a Safina to Nuh in Adal Judi Safina, the, the ship of Sayyidina Nuh landed also on Mount Juri on Ashura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala اتخذ الله إبراهيم خليلا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took Sayyidina Ibrahim as khalil on the day of Ashura. وغفر الله لداود في Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also forgave the slip of Sayyidina Dawood. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also returned the mulk the kingdom of Sulaiman to him on that day. وَكَشَفَ الضُّرَّ عَنْ أَيُوبُ On that day means he, the, the sickness of Sayyidina Ayyub and the affliction he was, he was experiencing was also lifted on that day. And he also Sayyidina Yunus came out of the belly of the whale after 40 days on that day. Sayyidina Yaqub and Sayyidina Yusuf met on that day after 40 years. And Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, alayhi musalam ajma'in, was also born on that day and raised to the first heaven on that day. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam married Sayyida Khadija al-Kubra, radiyallahu anha wa arda alayhi salam, on that day. Also Allah created heavens and earth on that day. The pen, Sayyidina Adam, Sayyida Hawa, all that was created on the day of Ashura. So as we can see, this is not an ordinary day. Um, and also, uh, according to the hadith uh, of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, according to the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, that in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim and Ibn Abbas قال قدم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم المدينة فرأى اليهود تصوم يوم عشراء فقال ما هذا when Prophet ﷺ went to Medina, he saw that the, the Jews were fasting on the day of Ashura, and he asked, what is this? Why are they fasting? 
This is a, a very righteous day. هذا يوم نجى الله بني إسرائيل من عدوهم فصامه موسى. This day is the day that Allah subhanahu wa taala saved the children of Israel from their enemy, which is Pharaoh, and that's for in in gratitude. Sayyidina Musa fasted that day after that. So Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, نحن أحق بموسى. He said, we are more entitled. Uh, فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا أحق بموسى that I am more entitled to uh, honor Prophet Musa's uh, uh, safety فصامه وأمر بالصيام then he fasted it and he ordered the Sahaba to fast on that day so also Sayyidina Musa was saved on that day and he said if I live for next year if I see next year, I will not only fast uh, the tenth, but I will fast the ninth as well. To uh, so, but Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم physicality left dunya uh, before that happens. So that's why we fast ninth and tenth. Some people fast tenth and eleventh. Some people fast nine, ten, and eleven uh, of Ashura. So this is a day of heavenly victory. Uh, according to also this book, that it's a day where many of the awliya received their rank of wilaya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them that rank of uh, awliya Allah uh, in this month, uh, month of Muharram. Uh, so it is good to take care for, for this day because according to Sahih Hadith that Allah, Prophet Sallallahu he said that Sawmu Ashura yukaffiru sanat al that fasting on the day of Ashura erases the sins of the previous year so subhanallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's generosity and ata is such that he is granting us for, the, for, for fasting one day to completely start a clean slate as if last year all the sins, all the transgressions, all the problems we've caused, all the difficulty we've caused will be erased inshallah. So it's, it's also a day of victory. So we ask in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabbi, we have our four enemies standing between us and good servanthood to be good servants to you our nafs, our shaitan, dunya our ego, our desires, our uh, love for materialism and uh, shaitan is standing between us and becoming good servants becoming obedient servants, becoming true servants grant us victory inshallah with the barakah of our teachers and mashayikh and our shaykh to overcome these enemies and to reach the rank of ibadullah insha'Allah mukhlisin ibadun mukhlisin lillah sincere servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala servants who live by Allah for Allah insha'Allah and before I go over some of the practices in uh, in tariqa, in our Naqshbandi uh, tariqa, that we do um, extra things that we do on the day of Ashura and um, that are mentioned also in the same book. It's called Al Haq fi Futuhat Al Haqqaniya by Mulan Sheikh Adnan Al Qabbani. May Allah sanctify his soul. He collected this from the teachings of Sheikh Abdullah and Sheikh Nazm Al Haqqani. Mulan Shaykh Muhammad mentioned uh, these things also I saw in a couple of sohbas that we shared today on uh, on the groups but it's good to go over them inshallah to remind ourselves and others to to try them some of them are really easy to do you don't have to uh, go out of your way to to perform these things on the, the day of Ashura which is Saturday inshallah but before that, um, 
we 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 live in it in, in a time now where a section of the Muslims have latched on on a historic event that is a sad event for the Ummah of Muslims and they have made of it such a spectacle if you want to say it such a thing and they want all Muslims to behave in a certain way otherwise they are not lovers of Ahlul Bayt or not lovers of Sayyidina Hussein and uh, that is that Sayyidina Hussein and his uh, family and his companions were martyred on the day of Ashura uh, a sad day for the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, because because he is Mu'allimun Nas al Khair, he is the one from Rahmatan al Alameen. He gave so much for his Ummah, he came to save his Ummah. So much goodness coming to his Ummah, and that some people in his Ummah found it in themselves to, to martyr the last grandson of a Prophet in existence, Sayyidina Hussein, in the name. Uh, of of being Muslims and those all those who were with him it's a sad day if you reflect upon it it's a sad day that that we ill-treated Sayyidina Muhammad that we harmed Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, in his family in his progeny and we and it didn't come from out, outside enemies but it come from Muslims they they were making iqama and praying on the battlefield before killing Sayyidina Hussein. And um, it's truly uh, an unfortunate event, but not for Sayyidina Hussein. It's an unfortunate event for those who perpetrated, for those who did such a thing. May Allah uh, save us from and just thinking about the, the crime they, they've done Allahu Akbar, how they're going to face Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu on the Day of Judgment, how they're going to meet him, in, in how they're going to ask for his shafa'ah after doing this to Sayyidina Hussein, someone he raised and loved uh, his, from his progeny. But at the same time, we, Sayyidina Hussein and his and his companions and his family achieved such a high maqam on that day they became martyrs they became uh, not just any any type of Mawlana, prophet ﷺ informed us Sayyidina hussein is sayyid shabab ahli jannah he is he is the sayyid who him and Sayyidina al hassan are the the masters of the youth of heaven in heaven, as we were informed by Prophet وسلم, there are no old people. As we all know, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was joking with an old lady. She asked him, am I going to heaven? He said, no. There are no, no old people go to heaven. And she was crying almost, leaving. And he said, you, you are going, but you will be a, a young lady. So everybody is youth. So that means that Sayyidina Hassan Hussain will be the masters of all the inhabitants of of uh, of heaven uh, such is their rank loving them is loving prophet uh, not loving them is not loving prophet prophet so both of them were martyred sayyidina al-hasan was also uh, poisoned uh, sayyidina ali was martyred and so many of Ahlul Bayt throughout the ages were martyred because they were true to the inheritance of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu is standing upright for the for what is right. So they were always targets um, of those forces of darkness in, on earth, and they were always uh, persecuted and martyred. So then. How come this happened, this fact happened on, on a day such as Ashura, a day of victory? Well, from the standpoint of dunya, you could take it as a loss. But from standpoint of Akhirah, look at the achievement of Sayyidina Hussein and what he has accomplished. Look at the achievement, what kind of 
uh, rank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them. What kind of mention that till today we use Sayyidina al Hussein's stand against tyranny, stand against darkness as an example of the highest, uh, the highest example of someone who sacrificed everything for the sake of, of uh, Haqq. Uh, there is, there is no, no, not only him, but his whole entire, entire family. Only Sayyidina Zayn al Abidin, radiAllahu uh, is the only one who survived from Sayyidina al Hussein's family. And look, Subhanallah, from Sayyidina Zayn al Abidin, and from Sayyidina al Hassan's, also two, two children, two, two male uh, children. The progeny of Sayyidina Muhammad now is twenty. They say is twenty-seven million. 27 million people of Ahlul Bayt from these two lights of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, even though they tried to erase it they tried to put out that light look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did this is even in dunya look at that victory and then in akhirah what kind of, what kind of victory they are the masters of the heavens yani, uh, Islam was rejuvenated and, and give him power over tyranny. Muslims were inspired to stand against tyrants with the actions of Sayyidina al Hussein. So that is also a victory. I don't want to take too, too, too long on this, but it, is, it must be addressed because even people in Al Sunnah al Jama'ah sometimes they feel that they have to act in a certain way to show their love for Ahlul Bayt. No. You love Ahlul Bayt, but you don't leave the way of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu You don't leave the example of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu You don't leave the Sharia of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu to show your love. To show your love, you don't transgress against his rule, against the laws of Sharia, against the example of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu in order to show your love. La no, we love Sayyidina Al Hussein, and we love his family, and we are saddened by the actions. But at the same time, we are proud of the family of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu We are proud of their achievement. We are proud of what they have accomplished in dunya. Of servanthood, true servanthood to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So, moving on, inshallah, on, on Saturday, we will celebrate the Ashura, uh, I think Saturday, the Saturday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. We will do uh, zikr and we will speak a little bit more about the sacrifices of Ahlul Bayt. But for now, uh, I would like to go over some of the practices, inshallah, of the day of Ashura. In the day of Ashura, as we said, that Prophet said, Man ala yawm Ashura, that on this day, if you can afford to spend extra on your family, on your children, um, on your parents, if you have extended family, because on that day who, who, who is generous on his family, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expand his risk, will give him more sustenance in the rest of the year. And Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Whoever takes a shower on this day, inshallah, will not have any serious illness for the whole year, except the illness, if he's supposed to die from that illness, then he will have that. Whoever puts kuhl, lam yarmad, means he won't have any eye disease for that year. Uh, also his insight. And whoever cuts his nails as well, Keeps away sickness on that day. And there is also a special dua on, on uh, the day of Ashura after reading 70 times Hasbullah wa Na'mal Wakil. Then there is a special dua, Subhanallah, Mil Al Mizan, Muntah Al Ilm, Wa Rabla Rida, Wa Zinat Al Arsh. 
لا ملجأ ولا منجا من الله إلا إليه سبحان الله عدد الشفع والعرش وعدد كلمات ربنا التامات كلها أسألك السلامة ورحمتك يا رحمة الرحمين ويوريد إن شاء الله ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وهو حسبي ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم and this must be read before أذان المغرب إن شاء الله we will read it on Saturday since we're gathering before المغرب we will also make توسل with the شهداء with the martyrs of who with Sayyidina Hussein and the martyrs of Karbala on that day we'll mention them by name and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us for their sake Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad on the 14th also there's the Mawlid of Sayyidina Shah Naqshband who is Imam Tariqa Naqshbandiya and So these are some of the practices. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us and grant you to fast uh, those days. May Allah accept inshallah our deeds and grant us to be inshallah after this year, this year inshallah make it the year that we become Allah's true servants, Allah's obedient servants, Allah's pious and sincere servants, insha'Allah. Wa min Allahi tawfiq bi hurmati al-Habib, bi hurmati al-Fatiha.